Hello, everybody. My name is Josh Fluken. And today we have a special unboxing. As you all know, Aquaria has come out, and those special fantastic collector boosters has come out with them. And, little known fact, one of my favorite things in the world, three things in minor, Godzilla Professional Wrestling and the One Piece anime. So anything coming out that even hints around those things always gets my attention. And really, the set got my attention at the words, make your own monster. Beautiful. Today, from our sponsors, we have gotten not just one, but two of these beautiful collector boosters. Look at them, so shiny. And today we're gonna open them. And there's a lot of prayers and hopes that we get all of the Godzilla. Not just one or two or half that I've been seeing some of them, I want it all. Because I very much plan on making that Ghidorah the head of a command deck. So, let's get started. First thing of course, we need to open the key. <laughs> ah, this is a beautiful knife. Ah, so, on this end of things, as everybody knows, with the pandemic going across the world, everybody's been locked inside. Haven't had a lot of magic content coming out. That is my fault, but I am changing some things. Got some better setups, got some better situations going on, so I can start doing some better videos. For now, we'll go with something that everybody's going to want to see, the shiny, shiny cards. We gotta look at that. Get rid of that. Flip out the packs. See, I even like the beastie on the front. Now, I will admit, when this first did the showdown, I know there's probably a lot of Vivian fans out there. I was not as impressed about that as I wanted to be. But I was sitting there in the morning like everybody else, waiting to see what the big announcement was going to be. And the instant I started seeing Godzilla happenings, I had a panic attack. I will admit, it was right before work. Whoo! Let me tell you. So it's three, six, nine, and twelve. 12 packs, we got this, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be fantastic, it's gonna be beautiful. Stackity, 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 stack. It's gonna start with the first one here. Ooh hoo hoo, look at that. Ah, see I love these, they're all so shiny. Ah, the shark token, yes. That is beautiful, why? Because Sharknado, no other reasons needed. We even got tornadoes in the back. Okay, got ourselves a shredded sh shre shredded sails. Ooh, destroy target artifact, deals damage, and cycling. Love the multitask cards. Boot Nipper enters the battlefield with uh, your choice of either death touch counter or lifelink counter. Now I like that mechanic, giving creatures counters that you can move around. Always fun. Let's see here. Let's see. Now, on this end of things, there's a lot of things people have been consistency in here, and we're hoping to pull a few of those things so we can talk about them a bit here. And, of course, you know, with the Aquarius set, there's a few controversies with the wording of cards, which we are also hoping to hit, uh, just because a first edition printing should have that fabled Corona Zilla. We'll see. Uh, Fire Prophecy, three damage, not bad, not bad. Another cycling card. God, I love that they brought the cycling mechanic, and they made it just so much better. It gives you options, which is nice. Now that land, that's a pretty forest. I like the art, the huge stalks, because this land is just full of behemoths. Hey, will you look at that? Pretty sure that was one of the commander deck cards. Oh, full art Lutri. Ah, the card that was banned before it had a chance. <laughs> I don't know how they wouldn't have figured that was going to get banned, though. I mean, three drop for a flash that copies spells is a three, two, and as a companion, that's literally just pure board value, no matter what. Now, I have heard, of course, a lot of people complaining about that companion mechanic, and we'll get to that in a bit, but look at that. Full art, Offspring's Revenge. See, this is actually one of the sets of cards I was most excited for. The three color enchantments in this set are ridiculous. I mean, look at this. Beginning of the combat, on your turn, exile target red, white, or black creature card from your graveyard, create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 1-1 one, one, and gains haste until your next turn. You get to copy your graveyard. It may be a 1-1, one, one, but enter the battlefield triggers. There's just so much stuff you could do with that. Even Aristocrats, you can gain value off of it. Whoo, look at that. Cavern Whispers, that's the comic art that I've been hearing about. Nice. And that mutate effect is just going to be all sorts of shenanigans. I've already been thinking of ways to mess with that. Uh, another one, Chittering Harvester. 
Maybe a creature mutates, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Ooh, that's nasty, but it is a six drop, but the mutate is five. Yeah, it's got potential. Dirge Bat, nice. Flash Flying with a mutate of six. Whenever this creature mutates, destroy target creature or planeswalker your opponent controls. That could be nasty, especially if you pull off the effect. Ha <laughs> ha, and there it is, the first one. King Caesar, Ancient Guardian. God, I love Caesar. He's the only one that actually pulled off martial arts moves during the movie, and it was wonderful. And he's cat themed. That's interesting enough. Creature mutates, other creatures go get plus X, plus X, and the with X is the number of times as a mutated. Honestly, we'll see how much value that has in it. The mutated mechanic is interesting. Some people are messing with it, but honestly, the companion mechanic is the one I see people abusing the most. And for, well, obvious reasons. Ah, look at that. And a fox bird. A vulpakeet? A vulpakeet. Oh. Oh my. Um. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, whenever a creature mutates, 1 1 counter. Vulpakeet. Hey, you know. Uh, feels like an unset. That's what it feels like now. So let's set some of the stuff aside, some of the prettier things. Of course, we're going to be setting aside to see how many Godzillas and comic book arts we collect today. Don't get me wrong. I want to see more of the full art stuff. And we might set that aside too. And of course, you know, tokens. I'm actually very happy about that because I'm hoping we get that enchantment. So many good enchantments in here. Uh, let's get these swept. Nah, we won't do the companions today. Let get these put aside. Go to the next pack. What do you say? Second pack. It will just open. Oh. Hey, we look at that. It popped out first, so we'll go for that one first. Destroy a perfect life form. And I love that they made it the Phoenix because it makes me just want to run it even more. <laughs> and Astroya was one of those classic Godzilla villains who did some serious damage. Creature mutates, create a red artifact token with a feather. Oh, yeah, because the Phoenix will never freaking die. And Destroya always ends up coming back. Beautiful. Okay, next one up here. Ooh, that's nice. I like this guy. So we got a full art and full hollow on them comic arts. And that is right here, the uh, Trumpeting Gnar. So whenever a creature mutates, create a 3-3 three, three token. You know, I think it has potential. The only problem is the mutate is 5 drop, and it by itself is a 3 drop. So it does have late game potential, but god, it just, mm, I don't know. There was some other nasty stuff I saw recently. Oh yeah, I forgot the tokens are double sided. I might have to track the shark token again. But we got the beast. And a human soldier. <laughs> that human soldier looks angry. For a 1 1, that's a big sword. Oh, uh, yeah, the other token was also. Sweet. And of course, you know, 3 3 beast. <laughs> ah, man. Dinosaurs, of course, making a new thing in this set. Wingfold Terran. Uh, Wingfold Terran enters the battlefield with your choice of a flying counter or a hexproof counter. Because I love these counters. There's so much potential, especially with uh, with a lot of the commander stuff that lets you move counters around. There's tons of cards that do it. It's just asking to be abused. Uh, Aegis Turtle, nice. Savai Sabretooth, simple, 3-1 for 2. Taiga Tiger, really? Taiga, for Taiga Tiger. Okay. Pataga Tiger enters the battlefield. Target human you control gets plus two, plus two. You know, I know there's a lot of human mechanic in this one, but I just don't see that flushing well with it. There's just other stuff. Uh, Polywog Symbiote. Each creature spell you cast costs one less to cast if it has mutate. Nice. And what if you cast a creature spell with mutate, draw a card, then discard a card? Nice. That's a lot of fuel there. Fight as one. One mana with a double effect. Choose one. Target human creature goal gets plus one, plus one. Indestructible. Ho, ho, ho. Target non-human gets plus one. <laughs> nice. That's nice. That's literally one mana instant speed for indestructible to something. God, there's so many things we're going to abuse the crap out of this. I'm already seeing Feather abuse this horribly. Okay, and of course, hollow, full, fully holographic planes. Crystals. It's nice. I gotta admit that's nice. Let's see. Netherborn Altar. Put a soul counter on Netherborn Altar. Put your commander into your hand from the command zone. Then you lose three life for each soul counter. Wow. Wow. For a two drop? Ah, oh. Ah, oh, that's gonna be abused. It's gonna be beautifully abused, though. Nice. Ah, this is the other blue guy I was thinking of, the legendary dinosaur hippo. And it's a full art, not comic color, but that's okay. Starting deck companion, three or greater in land cards, not hard to pull off with Simic. Uh, enters the battlefield, draw a card for each other, perfect control, three or greater. So yeah, it's just pure hand fuel at five cost. 
Nice. Ha! See? What was I saying? Not full art, but Song of Creation. You get to play an additional land. Whenever you play a spell, you draw two cards. And at the beginning of your end step, you discard your hand. A lot of people think the end step effect would suck. But think about it. Every time you play a spell, you draw two cards. And you get additional lands. The amount of ramp you're going to get off this is just dumb. Hitting those cart the uh, comic book style. We got Huntsman's Liger, Mutate Cat. I think we already pulled one of these. Yes? Yeah. Creature goes to XX where X is the number of times. But still nice to have that full art. Or the... The cartoon art for the comic books. Uh, Dreamtail Heron. Uh, Elemental Bird Mutate whenever a creature mutates draw a card. Yep, we already got one of those, but it's nice to get that. Oh, look at that. Full art of one of the Tri-Lands. And it's Battlefield Tapped. God, those are beautiful. It's nice to get another set of Tri-Lands. Just because I think we already had one set of the alt off color, and just not a set of the other on for the three. Because of, uh, um, God, was it all the way back in Alara? It was all the way back in Alara. It's been a while. Whoo! Okay. Let's get some stuff cup here. It might not have been. It might be earlier than Alara. Plane chase? Maybe. I feel we might have had another triple set at one point or another, but that's okay. Let's get some stuff pulled up here. Drop it off. Pull it out. Now, of course, once I start getting the certain ones that are tripling and doubling up, then I'm casting through them a little bit quicker. First, of course, my favorite part, the token. Cat token, nice. Human soldier with a spear this time. Much smarter than a giant sword flying from the sky with no wings. Uh, oh, yes. Quintessential. Wilt, destroy target artifact, enchantment, cycling of two. I think there's actually another card similar to Wilt. I don't think it's a reprint, but it's like a three drop that does the same thing. Which just is value. Because if you don't have artifacts and stuff to destroy, you get a draw off of it at instant speed. It's beautiful. Unlikely A, target creature plus two, plus zero, and indestructible. Another indestructible card. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, I've seen a lot of memes for this one. Honey Mammoth enters the battlefield. You gain four life because of the uh, the Pterosaur reprint. Uh, I forgot his names, and I feel really bad about that, kind of. Seawater Cliffs, you know, enter the field, tap, gain one life. I mean, it's not horrible. I do prefer some of the other dual lands just because, like, with the temples and stuff, I like crying, scrying. But, I mean, it's really pretty with that shine on there and those crystals. Flame spell does four damage to our creature. Excess damage does that creature. Oh my god, this is the spell with trample. That's beautiful. This is this is one of those things you want to get as many copies on the field as possible in one go, and then just rake somebody over the coals. There's actually a few creatures I've thought about this, and Commander especially, there's one that whenever you target a creature with a spell, for each other creature it could target, you target that creature as well. And you just field wipe. Target creature fights another creature for five. Clash of Titans. I mean, I love the motif, and it would really cool if they had done a, mo a version of this card with Zilla crash clashing with something, but I get what they're doing here. I just don't see, I mean, guess instant speed. Yeah, I guess instant speed is kind of what they're going for, but five for this one, there's just so many versions of it that only cost two. It is out of color, though, because green is usually the fight card, not red. So, yeah, I mean, that got, that's got potential. That's got potential. Island. Island looks nice. Lots of crystals, because Ikoria. Nice, nice, nice. Twinning Staff. If you would copy a spell one or more times, instead copy it that many times plus an additional time. Oh! You may choose new targets for the additional copy. Copy target and instant spell. You may choose... Wow! That's good. That's good. I've played enough copy spell decks to see some value there. Easy for a three-drop artifact, especially with Ralzeric, all the is it stuff that exists. Beautiful. Ah, here we go. Kahira the Orphan Guard. Cat Beast. Three. Full art. Not bad. Not bad at all. Huh, you look at that. Full art. Bonders Enclave. Draw a card. Active ability only if you control a creature with power four or greater, which honestly on a land for three isn't bad. Gotta admit. Okay, now we're getting back to the comics. So we got Cavern Whisperer. Again. Parcel Beast. Nice. Dirge Bat. Again. Ah! Baby Godzilla! Ruin Reborn! Yes! Some people think it's silly, but I love the fact that they have this. Mutates one less. It's that super fun mutate enhancer card. Beautiful. He was always just so... And then eventually, if I'm not mistaken, and I apologize if I am mistaken, but if I'm not mistaken, he eventually grew up to become one of the more recent Godzillas as the old Godzilla died from the Oxygen Destroyer, if I'm not mistaken. And then baby Godzilla grew up and took his place. I, I can't remember how many times Godzilla's been revived off of its kids, I think. I, I will have to check myself on that. It's been a bit... Now, Majestic Aracorn, full art. Let's see. 
whenever a creature mutates game for life. I mean, not bad. Not bad. Let's toss some stuff back here. Pretty sure we already got a dirge bed in there. Pretty sure we already got that in there. We're going to scoop some stuff aside. We're going to scoop some more stuff aside. Oop. Yeah, we already got like two of those. Don't need to save it for the final. Let's get another pack open here. Just set to feet. Dinosaur token, 1-1 one, one haste, not bad. Flip side token, another human soldier. Man, there's a lot of human soldiers here. Set that aside. Let's see, doubly calling return. Durable collar bug from your graveyard to your hand. Not bad. Being able to get return farter. Farter, like uh, uh, reassembling skeletons and squee. Goblin and Bob. Or squee the immortal. Squee the immortal. Squee the immortal is the one that pops from your, from your um, graveyard to your hand, which is really nice as well. And then uh, Mysterious Egg. This is the one that Japan got the the actual alternative art for that we did not, and I'm very sad about that. Uh, they get the Mothra Cocoon. Uh, whenever Kyushu meditates, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Nice. Let's see here. Then Dreamtail Heron. Uh, mutates whenever a creature mutates, draw a card, mutate for four. Not terrible, I guess. Target creature gets, uh, so sudden spinnerets. Target creature gets plus one, plus three until end of turn. Put a reach counter on it and untap it. That's not bad for one, especially with the number of cards you want to get reached to defend against flying. Not bad. Uh, let's see. Flourishing Fox, one drop that plus one counters off of cycling and cycles itself. That is value. <laughs> I like it. I like it, though. Probably people will argue with me about the value of that, but whatever. Channeled Force, this card. I have plans for this card. Uh, additional cost, you discard X cards when you cast a spell. Target player draws X cards. Channel Force deals X damage. Up to one Dark Creature or Planeswalker. Beautiful with that really nasty legendary that came out that was Is It Colors. That's just an engine for them at instant speed. Uh, let's see here. Iron Plains. Nice, grassy with lots of that. Haha! <laughs> this guy. Cryptic Trilobite. Enter the bill with X 1-1 one, one counters on it. Remove an X counter. Put two colorless mana. Only spend it to activate abilities. And you can pay one and tap it to put a counter on it. Beautiful. That's just... It's great. And, of course, we got General Kudro Dranith. Full art. Beautiful. Human-centric uh, Orzhov. So we got other humans get plus one, plus one. When General Kudro of Dranith or another human enters the battlefield under your control, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. Not bad. Pay two, sacrifice two humans, destroy target creature power for a greater. Yeah, he does not like kaiju. That is for sure. <laughs> yep. Yep. I've been seeing those memes with the uh, Shrekwai, Lord Farquaad. That's right, because some of you may die, but it is a sacrifice I am willing to make. Good times. Ooh, look at that. Speaking of sacrifices, uh, venture into the battlefield, choose odd or even. Zero is even. You don't say. Lava Brink Venturer has protection from each converted mana cost of the chosen value. That is fun. I just see so much shenanigans with flickering and just, yeah. Okay, got another trumpeting art on the comic. Auspicious Sterics, that one's a new one. Whenever this creature mutates exiled cards from the top of your library until you exile X permanent cards where X is the number of times this creature has been mutated, put those permanents onto the battlefield. Ooh, that's a nice beefy ramp. Hey, there's another full art one of the tri lands. Rogren Triome. Nice, nice. Oh, <laughs> and this is from Shin Godzilla, if I'm not mistaken. Godzilla Doom Inevitable. That's pretty. I like it. Not holographic, but doesn't need to be because it's still pretty. Now, the effect is kind of odd. And I will see how often we can actually pull this off with how much uh, mana it can potentially cause to go out. Um, but, I mean, eventually cycling out into victory could be fun. We will have to see. Probably not so much commander so much as standard, but, yeah, you never know. We'll have to see. Uh, on this end of things, it looks like we got a Regal Leosaur. Whenever this creature mutates, other creatures go to get plus two, plus one until the end of turn. So pretty much the Boros card that's going to mutate and wipe the field with a run over. Nice, nice. Set you aside because you're pretty. Uh, that's pretty. Stop. Nice. Now, I do like those full art lands, but we're setting those aside for now. Get off the board. Get to the next pack. Oh, 
I, at first I saw this, I'm like, I don't understand. Feather token for the Phoenix, nice. Another human soldier, I'm wondering if all of them flip back. We're gonna count that to see if all of them flip into human soldiers because of how many soldier token cards are potentially in here. That's okay, that's okay, the feather token's nice. Spring Claw Trap, that's different. Flash, Spring Claw Trap, it deals three damage to target by sacrificing it. I can see a lot of things for that, especially with some of the standard stuff that artifact support they have right now, making that just recurrable. So, I guess, common, not terrible. Um, Blazing Volley does one damage to each creature your opponents control. Oh, not bad for a one mana sorcery at all, especially because it's only opponents creatures, not your own. Strictly better Reign of Embers. <laughs> Just my opinion. Anyways, Migratory Great Horn. That's nice. Whenever this creature mutates, each search your library for basic land card, put it on the battlefield, mutate for three. Okay, so creature land fetch that can either give a boost, a uh, weak creature a big boost, or potentially mutate out for some funness. Tranquil Clove, because they brought back the, the lifelands this set. That's right, that's right. Not terrible, I guess. I don't know. Lifelands, I just, I feel there could be more to that. But whatever. For now, they work. Uh, Void Beckoner, pretty sure we already got this. Put a Death Touch counter when you cycle it. Pure value. Huh. Titanoth Rex. Nine for an 11 11 trample. Cycles for two. And when you cycle them, you put trample counters on things. Yes! Love it. Look at those big, meashly, beady, beastly, meaty hands. Not as meaty as my hands, but that it is what it is. Island, also very pretty. I think we've gotten two different island arts so far. So that's kind of nice. Boneyard Mycadrax. Boneyard Mycadrax. So Boneyard Mycadrax, power and toughness equal the number of other creature cards in your graveyard. Okay, so you got some recursion effect there, and it scavenged. Exile this card from your graveyard, put a number of plus one, plus one counters. Wow, that's not bad. Scavenge the sorcery. Nice, okay, okay. Whoo, first ultimatum. Emergent Ultimatum. See, I really like the reprint of the Ultimate as well. It's very nice. So, search your library for up to three monocolored cards with different names and exile them. An opponent chooses one of those cards, shuffle that card into your library. You may cast the other cards without paying their mana costs. Oh. Oh, that's dirty. Full art. Very nice. Hey, there we go. Unpredictable Cyclone. If cycling ability of another non-land card would cause you to draw a card instead, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a card that shares a card type with the cycled card. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost, and then put the exiled cards that weren't cast this way on the bottom of your library in a random order, and it cycles for two. That's just all sorts of dirty. Okay. Got another Dreamtail Hedron. Got another Migratory Great Horn. Yes, I've already hit on both of those. And Cub Warden, right? Whenever Kuchu mutates to two 1-1 one, one white craft creature tokens with life link, and it mutates for four. Has life tank, is a 3-5 for four. It's just pretty good. <laughs> Gigon, Cyberclaw Terror. Gigon has been, proved, been in a couple of Godzilla movies, for sure. Um, and it's definitely one of those villains that's always cool. The, the chest is a chainsaw, and he can <laughs> use it to skateboard. Ah, uh, the silliness some of these movies have put out. I got to admit, but Gigon was fun. Uh, this is another one of those cards that's getting actually a lot of play. The card it's based off of, and probably the Gigon version, because it's just great to have that companion effect, uh, being able to recur and mill people at the same time. It's beautiful. Now, oh, this one got a little bit bent. Oh, that's sad. I hope that wasn't doing because all of them would have got bent. Weird. Anyways, Lord Dracus mutates for is it double? Is it? Whenever this creature mutates, return target is or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. Ooh, that's nice. Three drop to get a creature or mutate it for two in order to recur instants and sorceries. Yeah, that's good. Okay, okay. Let's just say you were sad. You were sad and you were sad. <laughs> just gonna gently feather token, bring all this back round. Next pack. Now, at this point, I am realizing it's taking a while to explain things, unlike last time where I was only explaining certain things. Some people did have opinions about that, which is why I'm explaining everything this time. I was going to do it in two, one video, but I might have to do a second parter for this one. But it's a second box. It's going to be beautiful. We're going to have the total together at the end. Ha! Ah, yes! I've been seeing taking Catbirds! Catbirds! I'm just saying. Catbirds. Human soldier. Ha ah, ah, ha! The theory stands! 
What do we got here? Ram through, target creature you control deals damage equal to the power to target creature you don't control. If that creature you control has trample, excess damage is dealt to the... Oh my god. So now there is a red and green spell that tramples for damage. There is just nothing wrong with that. Okay. <laughs> Rumbling Rock Slide deals damage to the target creature on the number of lands you control. That's always good. Sorcery Speed would prefer instant for going off, but whatever. Destroy target creature, put a menace counter on a creature you control. It's just speed forcing just that pure value right there. Wing Scar Craig. Whenever Mentor enters the battle spiel, put a flying counter on target non-human creature you control and put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control with flying. Yes, because flying needed more support. <laughs> Honestly, I like that it's a wizard though, and the ETB is kind of nice. Um, barrier Breach. Exile up to three enchantments. Cycling for two. Ah, that's nice. I could see that for three drop instantaneous, especially commander with four people that could potentially be dropping nasty enchantments, and there's so many in this set. Oh, it's our first swamp. Nice, nice, nice. Heh, <laughs> shiny impetus. Yes. Plus two, plus two, and goads a creature for three, and whenever the enchanted creature attacks, you get a treasure token. Yes. <laughs> there's just nothing wrong with that. Ah, uh, there we go. Full Art Hunted Nightmare. I don't think that's comic book art, though. No, that's just full art. Uh, when Hunted Nightmare enters the battlefield, target opponent puts a death touch counter on a creature they control. Well, that's just BS. Ooh. Jagantha of the Wellspring. Another one of the companions of the five color ones at that. No card in your starting deck who has more than one of the same mana symbol in its cost. So what you're saying is standard in all five color commander decks. <laughs> he literally comes to the field for five and taps for all of the colors. Beautiful. That's just, yes. Okay, already pulled the microphone. Okay, throw the Ulanosaur. Hey, look at that. Full art comic Luca Copper Coat Outcast. Plus one exile a card in the library. Search for a creature. Exile this way. Oh, and then you get to cast it. Okay, I've seen this guy played a couple times now. Uh, exile target creature. Sorry, that's text is small. Exile target creature. You control the reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card with a higher fair amount of cost. Put that card on the battlefield. The rest of the bottom of the library. And each creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. Ooh, everything fights. Fight club. Nice. Yes! One of my favorite Godzilla characters from when I was young. Angerous. Armored killer. Or Angerous. I can't remember the exact pronunciation. I think a few people have tried correcting me on that one. But... Reach Trample, it's just... Uh, he's been Godzilla's buddy since the second Godzilla movie where they clashed. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, he... I think he had a short movie series of his own before he came over to Godzilla, but it was back in the black and white days. The second Godzilla movie, the very beginning, they were fighting on Monster Island. It was beautiful. At least I think it was Monster Island. Yeah, whatever. Let's move this stuff around. We got more packs to open. Yes, 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 yes. More packs. And as you can see, they start getting faster once I don't have to repeat myself in certain cards. Beast Token, another one. Is it a human? It is a human. Oh, yeah. I almost guarantee they do that to all of them. One Night Squad Commando enters the battlefield. If you attack this turn, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. It's not bad. I mean, it pops tokens, but yeah, it's after main phase two, so I guess. Prickly Mama Set. Yeah, don't want to touch that. First strike, whenever you cycle a card, it gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Not terrible. Dismal Backwater, another one of Life Gain lands. Uh, Nightmare Pangolin. One, five for three. Ah, I mean, it's got a big butt, I guess. And it's a nightmare. That's kind of nice. Ooh, I think it's the first one of these we pulled. Savai Crystal, the cycling tri-crystal artifacts. Archipella Gore. That is the most metal name I think I've heard in a while. <laughs> when this creature mutates, tap up to X creatures, where X is the number of times the creature is mutated. Those creatures don't untap during their controllers untap steps. Leviathan. God, Leviathan support. Always good. Mountains look like mountains. But at least I guess some of it is holographic. If you notice this mountain here, some of it is and some of it isn't. So the crystals are popping out on the mountain. That's clever, at least, because otherwise it literally just looks like a mountain. Anyways, <laughs> Ethereal Forager. Ooh, it's a freaking flying whale. Delve. That's beautiful. Flying. Whenever Ethereal Forager attacks, you may turn an instant sorcery card 
exiled with him to his... Oh. Oh, that's just dirty. You delve out what you want and you get it back. And it's an elemental. Nice. Ooh, full art inspired ultimatum target. Oh, yeah. This is the one that also has been very meme worthy. Target player gains five life. Inspired ultimatum deals five damage to any target. Then you draw five cards. The red one, it's good. Five damage to target. Yep, that's nice. <laughs> the blue part, draw five cards. Yep, super nice. The white part, five life. Okay. I mean, you're trying, white. That's what counts, is you're trying. Okay. Kahira the Orphan Guard. Pretty sure we already did this one. I don't think we had a holographic version, though. Uh, this is the, the essential CAD card, basically. Now, on this end of things, Pouncing Shore Shark. <laughs> I love the sharks that are in this set, I must admit. Uh, mutate Flash. Whenever this creature mutates, you return target creature to put it across the older hand, so it just bounces, which isn't bad. Another Lord Dracus. Ooh, there's another Full Art of the Trilands. Uh, Cryome enters the battlefield tapped. And the best thing, these all lands have cycle. So if you don't want the Triland effect, you can cycle them out. Okay, now this is one, I will openly admit, I do not remember the movie. And I'm almost certain it was one of the Japanese releases, releases, which is why. Dorat, the perfect pet. I'm gonna look this up, because I need to know where this came from. This is one of the Godzilla cards. And I cannot for the life of me remember which movie it was in. And it bothers me. Because it obviously didn't fight Godzilla. Because that's not happening. Maybe it fought Canadian Godzilla? It's possible, because there's a couple movies. Yeah, I'll look it up later, though. Still pretty. Is it colors? And whenever you cast non-creature spells, you have one one counters. I mean, that's value for two. Ooh, that. Plains Swamp Forest, baby. Look at that. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Shark. Man, we got two of those Tri-Lands. One of them being holographic is nice. You know, because Commander players like that bling, baby! If there's one truth in life, Commander players like to holify. <laughs> okay, getting the next pack open. Oh, look at that 8-8 eight, eight Kraken token! I will admit, that at least looks intimidating. Out of all the Kraken tokens I've played, because I play a lot of stuff that pops Krakens because I'm in Korea. Love, love, um... Oh, man, I'm forgetting your name right now. Uh, the Simic uh, Planeswalker. And she's my favorite, and I own every version of her. And I'm going to hate myself. My, main, my mind's stuck on Godzilla right now. Ah, human Soldier, of course. But Kraken Tokens. It will be nice. Bristling Blur can't be blocked by more than one creature. Okay, Cone Essential. Four damage target attack and you're blocking creature. Yeah, white. Okay, would like that have been one cost, but instant speed, I guess, for two. Um... Kiora. Kiora, that's right, because everybody thought Kiora should have been in this friggin' set, and then she wasn't, and the set's named Ikoria, and it was just screaming to put a Ikor Just... Okay. Of one mind. The spell costs two less to cast if you control a human or a creature and a non-human creature and draw two cards. Nice. Sleeper Dart enters the battlefield, draw a card. Always good. Sacrifice Sleeper Dart. Tire creature doesn't untap any control and takes on tap step. Very nice. Dire tactics. Exile target creature. If you don't control a human, you lose life equal to that creature's toughness. Yeah, but if you control a creature, it's literally a two drop. Was it Mortify? Mortify was a four drop, wasn't it? Yeah, Mortify was a four drop. Maybe three drop. I know there was a two drop one of these. It was uh, the axe that gives you minus five, minus five. That's just as nasty. Uh, Necropanther. Cat Nightmare. When it mutates, return target creature for mass three or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. Almost like the other black white cat. You know, they kind of put a freaking cat nightmare theme there. That one that's literally ruining all the formats. Forest. Pretty. Ooh, look at that. We got one of the partners. Ukima Stalking Shadow. Yes, because whales and wolves needed to be together forever. Easy uh, Demir colors here. Can't be blocked. And when it leaves the battlefield, it deals X damage to target player. And you gain X life where X is his power. I mean, it's got some potential there. I'll give that. Another Offspring's Revenge, Everquill Phoenix. So we've technically pulled this already, but it was the Godzilla version. It's the Phoenix that makes the Feather Token. Vulpigeet. Okay. We just... You just... You just go away. Auspicious Starix. Elk Beast. Yeah, no, pulled that one. Woo! There's the main guy. He's on the box, ladies and gents. Gem Razor. <laughs> Look at it. 
you could tell they like him because they actually put rocks in front of his comic art. Mutates for three, four, four, reach trample for four. When another creature mutates, destroy target artifact enchantment and opponent controls. That's just, it's just good. I mean, it's nice. Especially because you get the reach and the trample. It just does so much for green. There's better creatures, don't get me wrong, but... Ah, yes! Mothra! I'm very sad she's not legendary. It's very sad. But she's actually kind of nasty. Flying, 3-4 four for 4. Whenever a creature you control without flying dies, you return to the battlefield on your control under control with a flying counter on it. You basically resurrect your creatures and make them almost nigh unblockable because there's just not enough flying kill out there. And by the way, there's lots of flying kill, just nobody ever freaking runs it. Insatiable Hemophage. Well, he's about to eat something. Uh, whenever a creature mutates, each opponent loses X life, and you gain X life where X is the number of times this creature is mutated. But it has death touch. I guess that's not bad. It mutates for three. I guess it's not horrible. Mothra! Jim Razor! Kraken token. Let's get this done. Next pack, please! Almost to the end here, down to our last four packs here of this wonderful, beautiful Aquaria set. Another beast token, and let me guess, human soldier. Look at that! Hum Get this shit out of my... Okay. Then we got Bloodfell Caves here. Dead white. Creature gets plus, minus two, minus two, one for an enchantment. That's fun. Farfinder, when Farfinder enters the battlefield, you search library for a basic land card reveal, put it in your hand, and shuffle your library. What? That's not bad, especially because we already have cards kind of similar to this. Um, the 1 1 flying for 3. That's artifact that does the same thing. This one is a fox artifact. What does the fox say? Go search a land. <laughs> okay, so we have a crustacean here. 1 6 flash for 4. That's got some booty. <laughs> Just saying. Chittering Harvester, whenever this creature mutates, each opponent sacrifices. I'm pretty sure we pulled one of these as the, as the, uh, the full comics as well. But we got a non-comic holographic. Reconnaissance Mission, whenever an opponent controls... Whenever a creature you control does combat damage to a player, you may draw a card, and it cycles. That's just really good, too. Mountain. Different mountain. See, they did a really good job with the crystals. I don't know if you guys can see it, and I'm hoping, because I'm trying to angle it out. Inside the picture, there is holographic, but you'll notice there's also more holographic specifically in the sections that are crystals in each of the cards. Because Ikoria was all about that crystal energy, which has made everything freaking gigantic. Nice. Selective Adaptation. Sorcery. Reveal the top seven cards in your library. Choose among them a card with flying, a card with first strike, and so on. For, like, literally all the abilities. Put one of the chosen cards on the battlefield and the other chosen in hand and rest in the graveyard. Jesus, for six? I could tell you which deck that came in. <laughs> hey, Winota, joiner of forces, legendary human warrior creature in the colors of Boros. Whenever a non-human creature you control attacks in the top six cards of your library, put a human creature from a card from among them onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking, he gains an instructable to the end of turn. Put the rest of the cards in the bottom of your library in a random order. Now, I heard somebody was running jank with this with red, white, blue. Um, that stupid human seven drop that takes permanence. Oh my god, cheating him out that early is dirty. Ooh. I haven't pulled a lot of these yet, and I like these. Because these are the instant speeds that are the mythos for some of the legendary creatures of Ikoria. So this is the mythos of Nethroi. Now, the only upsetting part about this really is that there is no flavor text for the mythos! Such a missed opportunity! Hashtag bring back good flavor text. <laughs> Destroy target non-land permanent if it's a creature or if green and white was spent to cast the spell. So basically, you get two, four, three, just destroy a non-land permanent. Just anything you want if you run the three colors or if you just want to run it in black, creatures. It's just, it's good. I mean, look at him. He also looks so happy. His belly is full. <laughs> Another Lord Dracus, Cloud Piercer. This is a bit new one. When this creature, creature mutates, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. Eh. Ooh, man, we've gotten every version of this so far. Ever Quill Phoenix. Do you see that? That's the comic book card version. We've had the hollow, the non hollow, the Godzilla, and now the comic book art. And that's actually really pretty. Don't get me wrong, Godzilla all the way. But that. 
really well done, guys. <laughs> and Bio Quartz Space Godzilla, cause reasons. Space Godzilla was fun, because that was also, uh, had Ghidorah in it, if I'm not mistaken. It's been a while since I've seen Space Godzilla, because I think it popped up a couple times, but yeah, they had to go to the moon, fight the, the monster, Space Godzilla shows up. <sighs> Trample, mutate, cast Brachos, Age of Picks, up forever from your graveyard using its mutate ability. That's just great. <sighs> okay. Anyways, one more card, what was that? Uh, it's just Glowstone Recruits. It's just Glowstone Recruits. It just, it doesn't even matter. This, though. Nice. Put those aside. Get these packed up so we can get those last three packs done. One. Another beast token. Come on! I wanted some Krakens and Feathers and a human soldier. Yeah. Primitive Sergeant. Perimeter Sergeant attacks other humans get plus one plus zero. Guess that's not bad, especially for three, I guess. It is booster, but and yeah, no. whatever creature you control mutates, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature and you gain two life. That's got some niftiness. Whenever you cycle another card, you gain one life and it cycles for one. Okay, okay. Human cleric? Ooh, I like clerics. Clerics are fun. Target creature gets plus two plus two until another turn, put a flying counter on it. Instant speed. That's not terrible, I guess. Exuberant wolf bear. Wolf bear? Really? Well, Bear Force One, except it's not a bear. It's a four, four, four for four, four. You just fused a wolf and a bear together, which I know it's a wolf bear, but it should either be, it should still be two for two, two. What is this trickery? Okay. Whenever Exhibit Wolf Bear attacks, you may change the base power and toughness of target human you control to Exhibit Wolf Bear's power and toughness on the turn. Ooh, there's some shenanigans you could pull with that. Oh, there's some shenanigans you can pull with that, especially with the uh, the one human. There's the uh, the two green drop. When he swings, he gets to share his power with somebody as well. And you can just swing your wolf bear and then power him up and then have his trigger go off afterwards and just power the wolf bear up. And they're, they're teamed together. Indeed. Anyways, it's just... But it's still... Okay, easy prey. Destroy target creature to convert a mana cost two or less. Cycle for two. The cycle is a nice recovery on that, just because it'll help you that early game to get some control in the field. Another swamp. Is there only one crystal in here? Yeah, one crystal right in the middle, but still. Pretty. Mind Bleacher. Nightmare. Love nightmares. When this creature mutates, exile the top card of each opponent's library face down. You may look at and play those cards for as long as it remains exiled. You know, I think there's still cards that do this already, and nobody likes facing them. But yeah, let's make more. <laughs> Zerda the Dawnbreaker, Elemental Fox, Companion, each permanent spell starting deck has activated ability. Nice. Activated abilities cost two less. Nice. That almost inspires me. I could see Kenrith on this. I could see Kenrith for days on this. Just an entire deck of activated abilities. Uh, target creature can't block this turn for one. Not bad, not bad. Ooh, this guy was the mainstay of the review release video for Ikoria. Obosh the Prey Piercer. Hellion Horror, starting deck contains only cards with odd converted mana costs, which is perfectly freaking fine. The source of control would deal with an odd converted mana cost, would deal damage to a permanent player, it deals double the damage instead. Yeah. That's just, and even for 5, he's a 3-5, which effectively is a 6-5. <sighs> Beautiful. Okay. Where we go next? Got it. Maybe it's just, like, bird, bird fusions I have a problem with. Porcuparakeet? Porcuparrot. But it just... Why? I mean, I, I understand. Like, this is like super mega ultra spiky legs of doom. All the leg fetishists bring their shakes to the yard or whatever the shit that is. <laughs> but <sighs> maybe it's just with birds. Maybe it's just that many with birds. This creature taps deal X damage any target with X the number of times it is mutated. That's actually a pretty good effect. Still. Ooh... Phaedrox, Apex of Thunder, Comic Full Art. Nice. His cost just makes him nicer because he's flying first strike for three for a three three. Mutates for four. And whenever this creature mutates, you may cast target non creature card with the government mana cost three or less from your graveyard without paying his mana cost. Dirty. What's next? Well, friends, 
we're going to start with this because we've already pulled like four of them. And we did it. Fully holographic Space Godzilla Death Corona. Do you see that? That is beautiful. I know there was a lot of controversy with the name because a lot of bad stuff has happened because of the coronavirus. But changing the name. A lot of people go back and forth. There are certain times, yes, I get it, that Towers card, they did not purposely do it that way, I get it. There was no reason to change the name of this. Corona, regardless of what the virus strain is, the Corona family, Corona existed before that virus strain was ever identified. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's one of the stars people use when charting. It's, it's a main fixed point. It's a type of light. And then the virus happens and changed it. Which, from a collector standpoint, just is just beautiful because now I have a first edition holographic version of it. But from an overall standpoint, there really wasn't a reason to back down on that or think you're going to hurt somebody's feelings. A lot of people have died, don't get me wrong. I'm not in any way, shape, reducing that. It is a very dangerous virus. I get that. That's why I've been inside for a good three months, only doing things like laundry and then prepping for this stuff to come in. It's also why I haven't had a lot of content, because I haven't had a physical human reaction to do trades, talk about decks and stuff. I've been kind of cut off. But I don't think they should have changed the name. In the end, Space Godzilla, as always, was tied in with this effect before this virus had become something devastating. It just became something with a little more political correctness than we really needed to have in Magic, in my opinion. Now we can debate in the comments if you want, but for now, we're going to another pack! Uh, yes. You go away. You go away. Get this out of my area. Two! Let's get this started. Come here. Yes! Another shock token! I just love... I, I, we haven't pulled the enchantment yet, which I was a little sad about, but that's okay. Human soldier. Yeah, they're going to do all human soldiers. Point proven by the last pack. Unless the last pack isn't, and then I'm just going to have an attack. Uh, three for a two for a vigilance. I guess it's not terribly bad. Uh, human wizard recycle another card. Draft deals one damage to each opponent. That's got potential. That's almost like a cycling version of uh, the gutter snipe, except you know a little weaker because well, cycling is a little easier to pull off and has better value on it. But cycling as a whole for one. Okay. Memory leak. Target player reveals their hand. You choose an online card from that and player's graveyard hand and exile it. Cycling one. Meh. Target creature gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Put a first strike counter on it for one. That's not bad for an instant speed. I like that. Uh, oh, enchantment. Weaponizing the monster. Sacrifice creature weaponized deals two damage to any target. Really? For a one drop? Dang. Might have to build me some aristocrats. That's just... Mwah. Okay, anyway. Didn't we just pull this? Yeah, we did. It was a comic book art. That's just... No. No, 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 no. No. We don't need to view that one again. Forest, pretty. Crystals. Don't really stand out as much because they're bright white crystals. Because all the shiny is kind of white. But still. Frontier Warmonger. What is this? Whenever one warrior creatures attacks, one warrior opponents or a planeswalker they control, those creatures gain menace. Oh, Oh, that's dirty. Hey, look at that full art song of creation. We already pulled one of these, so we already know what it does. I just love it. This guy has brought controversy in the game of Commander. People want him banned now. Uh, your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. And as you all know, Commanders exist in the command zone unless you bounce it to your hand, which not a lot of shit can do, part of my language. And so he comes to the field and goes, guess what? This is what all your Commanders can do. All of them. It's almost as bad as the artifact, uh, the Arena of Legends or whatever, that also makes all legends stay tapped, except at least your commander has activated abilities you can usually use. This doesn't let it ever exit. It's just bullcrap. It's almost as bad as Teague, and it's probably used in Teague decks because Teague players. Shooting Harvester already got it. I'm in a bad mood. Ooh, now this one, this is one I definitely, for sure, enjoyed the art of. The Luna Apex of Wishes. Now, I do want the Godzilla art tone, alternate art of this. I do. Because Ghidorah is one of my favorite. So far, we haven't pulled it. We may not pull it. I haven't seen a ton of them come through. So, 
Regardless, the art in this is really nice, and this effect sure lets you exile from the top top card of your library until you exile a non-land permanent and you get to put it into the battlefield. It just fetches, which is beautiful by itself. Wow. Look at that. Another. Another. But that's okay, because guess what? Another. <laughs> Non-holographic Corona right on the tail of a Heron. We're just gonna... And it's a non-holographic, so I will also just put that stack there. Ugh, cannot wait to use shark tokens. Three! This is gonna be the last one, folks. Of the last three. Ah, yes, okay. At least we got more of those, because I myself, I use Kraken tokens. And let's prove it here, human soldier. Yeah, it's a human soldier with a really big sword, which is going to do nothing against monsters. Unless you're in a world of anime. Thornwood Falls, Bite Leech, enters the battlefield, target creature to opponent troll, gets minus two, minus two, remove all counters from that creature. Oh. Oh, that could be nasty. A 5-2 flashes in and can literally eat Hydras alive. Beautiful. Anticipate. Oh, yeah, it's anticipate. Reprinted. Snare Tactician, whenever you cycle a card, tap... Okay. Tap for cycle. Dire Tactics. Yeah, already got one of those. This! This! Passion of Remembrance. Three drop. Makes a 1-1 one, one token, and whenever a creature control dies, each opponent loses one life, and I gain one life. It is the reprinted, enchantmented version of Blood Painter, and I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Mountain, again. Ooh, Trin Champion of Freedom. Another one of the partners. At the beginning of the end step, if you attack this turn, put a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Okay. Yes! We got a full art of the Shark Typhoon! This is literally Sharknado. But they couldn't legally get the rights to the name, so they named it Shark Typhoon. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you get XX blue shark creature tokens. With flying, where X is that spell's converted to mana cost. You cycle it for X and two blue. When you cycle it, you get an XX blue creature token with flying. Nothing wrong with this enchantment. People say, oh, but it's a six mana. It is designed for commander. Beautiful. Okay, almost done here. Fretland Felidar. Ooh, that's a bit never. Oh, yeah, I remember seeing this guy. So, Vigilance, four for a three, five, and creatures you control with Vigilance gets tap one to tap a creature. That is just not right, but beautiful. Mystic Oricorn, huge mutates for life. Jesus, all that is holy, I swear. This is just as bad as the parakeets. Ugh. Nice. Nice. Gem Razor. Beautiful. Oh my, guys. Will you look at that? Another of the full holographic trilands. That's beautiful. You know what's more beautiful than that? It's the most beautiful thing in the world. It's just... It's beautiful. Not that. Not the Vulpakeet. Get that out of here. You just... You stop that. You just... You stop it. Okay. You, you almost ruined the happiness. That right there, friends, is a Ghidorah, King of the Cosmos. This is one of the most iconic villains for Godzilla as a whole, and honestly has been one of my favorite things. Growing up, I love villains. I don't know why. I just love them. They always seem to have more, like, oomph to them than the heroes most of the time. And a three-headed lightning dragon. I mean, this led to my addiction to Yu-Gi-Oh! only because of Blue Eyes White Ultimate Dragon. <sighs> God. Just, mmm, so happy right now. That's great. Okay, so Flying Trample Mutate, as you know, Apex of Wishes does the effect. Uh, but alas. We're going to top off what we got here. One second here. So out of here, we're going to top off with some of the stuff we got. We're going to spread it out a bit. Do the best we can with what we got. So, of course, Ghidorah! Beautiful Corona. And we're going to put the comic books off because I want the Godzilla lined up. Comics. Corona. Comics. Space Quartz. Chem Razor. Mothra. Shark. Dorette. Luca. Angerith. I just realized you're a bit off camera there. Sorry about that. Let me realign you.
Yep, 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 yep. Lord Rackus, Cub Warden, Gigod. Legal. Baby Godzilla! Godzilla Doom Inevitable. No, no. Destroyer! No! No, no. Oh yeah, and I put it up uh, putting out this is like one of the only enchantments we got. Besides the uh, the other one. We did get the other one, I didn't put it in, that's okay. We'll just set this aside. Cavern Whisper, Chittering Horan, King Caesar, Ancient Guardian, the guy in the suit, the new martial arts. Oh dude, this is a good pull. So I said two boxes. We do have a second box right here. We are going to open this in the next video, because this video has gone a bit longer. And at this point, it's pure value. Now there is There is one more thing here to notate. They were dropping commander cards in here, as you know. These came out in some of the commander decks that are out there, if I am not mistaken, and are great commander fodder, legendary creatures that can run on deck. I know she was one of the faces. I know he was one of the partner sets, as was she. I'm not sure if this is just commander. I'm pretty sure this is... Yeah, no, I think he was one of the commander, too, as one of those. And, yeah. There's stories with this guy. And of course, Winona, also one of the commanders. Um, now, on this end of things, each of them also mythics. Let's see how many we got totaled. One, two, three, four, five. Come on, come on, come on. I'm pretty sure that was it on there. Six. 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So 11 Mythics in total. Out of the 16, 12 packs? 12 packs. See? This just made my day way too much. Now my thoughts are already going into what I'm going to build with this. Not a bad pull, guys. I must admit, not a bad pull at all. So, on this end of things, we're going to end off this video here. Remember, like, share, and subscribe, please. And any comments, any feedback, I will use. Absolutely. Now, on this set of things, I thank you guys again tuning in to Josh Flukin. We are going to be tapping out for today, and we will see you on the next video.